listen while the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Speaking to you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names and who recommend and sell the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company, like Rexall MI-31, for example, Rexall's popular and versatile mouthwash, gargle, and breath deodorant. Full-strength MI-31 kills contacted germs almost instantly, yet will not harm the delicate membranes of the mouth and throat. Ask for Rexall MI-31 at Rexall drugstores everywhere. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Now your Rexall family druggist brings you a transcribed half hour with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. Gee, Diamond, I'm sorry. Did I hurt you? Oh, no, 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 Seymour. I feel great. Oh. Who needs teeth? Come to think of it, though, I might be more comfy down here if you'd lift this desk off my chest. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, oh. Uh, there you go. Oh, oh well, thanks, thanks. Sorry, I didn't mean to knock you over. Oh, sorry, forget it. Forget it. I, I enjoy having my chest crushed as much as the next guy. Okay. Now, the throw I'm going to show you now is called a Japanese shoulder throw. Uh, look, uh, Seymour, you've convinced me. Judo is a wonderful sport. I I didn't realize what I've been missing all these years. I, I, I love this sport, judo. Now, what'll it be, canasta or old maid? What? How about hopscotch? Oh, come on, come on. Let me show you just one more throw, huh? Not even if it was with a beanbag. Hey, maybe some wrestling holes in. I know a lot of wrestling stuff. Must be some trick you'd like me to try. No, 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 Seymour. I, I, I really don't believe I... Well, come to think of it, yes, I... There is a wonderful little trick. Huh? You get yourself a nice long rope, throw it high up into the air... Yeah? And then real quick you climb way, way up to the top and just disappear. Oh, uh, that's nuts. Oh, I defeated it, huh? Well, no. Diamond Detective Agency, brains, experience, enthusiasm, delirium tremens. Rick, don't be so silly. I might have been a prospective client. Oh, hi, sweetie. Hi. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. But you'll have to admit, I, I have got brains and enthusiasm and good looks and a dynamic personality. And my father can beat up your father. Rick, you're incorrigible. No, I'm right here in New York. Oh, that's just dandy. Now, will you please tell me what we're doing tonight? Oh, that, honey, is a long story. I'm comfortable. Well, remember the day we walked into Gimbel's basement and I bumped into an old schoolmate of mine who was demonstrating barbells? <laughs> I remember how funny you looked when he goaded you into picking up that big weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how hysterical it was when he had to carry me upstairs to the chiropractor. I carried you just like a baby, too, didn't I? Who's that? Now, that's him. Muscles. He bicycled all the way over from Jersey just to tell me his ideas on self-defense. He bicycled? Oh, he was dressed for it. Top hat, tail, sneakers. Well, what are you talking about? One of his cleverest ideas was that I'd treat him to dinner tonight if he could knock me to the floor in less than 30 seconds. So? Gave him the battle of his life. Seven seconds. The point is, where can we eat where they'll poison his food? Hey, I heard that. It's all right, Seymour. You can order small helping. Rick. Let's make it Leon's, baby. Okay? Must we? Will you be an angel and meet us at Leon's? I'll meet you at Leon's. Eight o'clock sharp. Rick, if you keep me waiting. If I keep you waiting, you have a lock of my hair. Eight o'clock. Sharp. Well, I'll see you at Leon's at eight o'clock, huh? Now, bring lots of money, because I'm a guy that can really eat. Oh, I bet you are. Well, if you arrive there before I do, Seymour, start in on the ferns by the front door. <laughs> Seymour was too stupid to go away mad, but at least he went away. I settled back in my chair and made a half-hearted attempt to figure a face out of the water spot on the ceiling. When I woke up, it was five o'clock, and I hated myself for the indulgence. 
As I sat there thinking how much my mouth tasted like an old motorman's glove, I heard a noise in the hall on the other side of my door. Well, good afternoon. Something I can do for... Juice bar. Juice bar. Hey. He fell face forward into the pool of blood at his feet, like a wino who'd stumbled into a fountain of muscatel. Funny, isn't it, how an ice pick loses all its homey appeal when it's sticking out of a guy's back? The ice pick this guy was wearing was no exception. I didn't know how long he'd been leaning against my door, but one thing was certain, it was long enough to die. I put in a call to 5th Precinct Police Headquarters and Lieutenant Levinson, and ten minutes later, my office was full of badges. And you have no idea who he is, huh, Rick? Not the biggest, Walt. Well, a checkup shows you're the only office in the building that's been open after two, so he must have been on his way to see you when he got it from behind. Uh, maybe he was delivering ice and just happened to fall on his ice pick. Otis. Yeah? Otis, now that you've solved it, why don't you go down to the glue factory and let them put you up in nice little glass bottles? Oh. Well, anyway, here's a billfold in his pocket. That ought to tell us something. How about a look, Fatty? Huh? Oh. Oh, sure. Here. Hmm. Quite a card collector, wasn't he? Quite. Gold furriers, the copper room, O'Toole's diner. It's lousy food. Got Tomein once from that cheesecake. I remember. I got Tomein just watching you eat it. I resent that. And I accept your apology. Yeah. Huh? Where's that green card from? This one? Yeah. Mm, the Apollo Health Club. Hey, that's right down the street. Nothing with the old boy's name on it, though. Afraid not. However, something tells me you'll get that from the old boy's fingerprints. Let's hope so. Ah, sir, you this afternoon, do you, sir? Welcome to the Apollo Health Club. May I be of assistance? I'd like to get a massage. Splendid. <laughs> Performs wonders after a fatiguing day. A veritable balm to the chafed tissues of the body. But will it cure snow blindness? I beg your pardon? No, oh, just ignore me. I'm a little chewed up today. I assume you're referring to a state of mind. Well, not altogether. Got a kink at my back that isn't entirely metal. Well, at least you've come to the proper place. A measure of skillfully applied anatomical science will rejuvenate the damaged musculature in no time. O'Brien, Mr. O'Brien, front, please. One of my best masseurs. Oh, you're the owner, huh? I am, sir. Let me introduce myself. Emerson Van Arthur. Doctor of Anatomical Science. Richard Diamond. A pleasure. A uh, nice layout you have here. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Five years of assiduous study in Switzerland under the illustrious Dr. von Seppelville have given me a boundless knowledge of the human mechanism. As a consequence, of course... Uh... Are you for me, Doctor? Uh -huh. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, by, oh, by all, I did. <laughs> uh, Mr. Diamond here wishes a massage. Sure, fine. I'll speak to you later, Mr. Diamond. I just heard, sir. Remember, the blood toward the heart, always toward the heart. A real private detective, huh? A too private, judging from last month's receipts. Ah. <laughs> hey, you know you really rubbed that kink out of my back? Good. Don't know if you noticed it, but I was doing all my rubbing with my right arm. Tore a muscle on my left shoulder this morning and really put it out of commission. Oh, that's too bad. Speaking of things being out of commission reminds me. There's a body down at the morgue I'd like you to take a look at. Guy might have been a client of yours. Oh, what makes you think that? Had a card from the Apollo Club at his billfold. Oh? Uh, when could you come down? Uh, how about tonight? We close here at 10. Fine. Make it, uh, what about 10.30? Know where the morgue is? Yeah. Now, how'd this guy die, anyway? Well, somebody hit their ice pick in his spinal column. No kidding. Yeah. The corpse is a little dark complexioned man. Kinky hair, glasses, bald spot on the top of his head. Hey, that description fits a guy who comes in here every night around closing time. Fanatic on diet, he buys wheat germ from us by the case. Know his name or where he lives? Oh, I know the. Uh, pardon me, boots and gentlemen, but I'm afraid I'll have to ask Mr. O'Brien to hurry down to the gymnasium. Oh, sure, right away, sir. Uh, here's a fresh towel, Mr. Ben. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt like this, but. We're a trifle under staff. The next expediting the evening rush is something of a problem. Well, all right. Talk to you later tonight, Mr. Diamond. All right. Oh, hey, in case you can't back it, give me a buzz at Leon's restaurant. I'll be there till a quarter of nine. Night. Ah, 
Bonsoir, Hello, Leon. Parisi, Parisi. Which translated in English means? Right this way. <laughs> Both my guests arrived? Oui. First the young lady, then a few minutes later the uh, gymnast. Uh, but, uh, uh, Mr. Diamond, a telephone call is waiting for you. Oh, thanks, thanks, man. Hello, Diamond speaking. Hello, Mr. Diamond. This is Red O'Byron down at the Apollo Club. Oh, yeah, O'Byron. Well, uh... Hey, listen, you've got to come down here right away. I really stumbled into something. Yeah? What's that? Can't tell you over the phone. Just get down here. Drop everything and get down here. Hurry. Look, uh, uh, Red, I'm right in the middle of the... Hello? 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 Hey, kids, i got to run. Be back in a few minutes. Just where do you think you're going? Place called the Apollo Club. Yeah? Well, how about my dinner? Uh, go, go right ahead and order. I'll be back. Oh, uh, by the way, Seymour, that potato salad on the child's plate is a real deal for a quarter. And Helen? Yes, Rick? Shoot the kill if he even suggests wrestling. <laughs> I walked out of Leon's, flagged down a cab, and spent the trip back to the Apollo Club, wondering what Red O'Byron was so worked up about and why he'd hung up on me. As my cab started to swing in toward the curb, I got that lousy feeling again, and I decided definitely it was not one of Leon's martinis, but rather the large white ambulance parked in front of the Apollo Health Club. I was halfway up the steps of the club when Dr. Van Arter appeared in the doorway. Oh, oh good evening, Mr. Diamond. This, this is terrible, terrible. What is? We... We've had an accident. Red O'Byron? Uh, yes. Oh, terrible. I, like losing his son. Losing? He's dead? Yes. He, he, he was performing a handstand on the rings in the gymnasium. And he slipped and fell. Broke his neck. Before we continue with the adventures of Richard Diamond, private detective, here's your Rexall family druggist. Last week, a customer told me that... Something I really like about Rexall Milk of Magnesia is that one bottle won't be so thick I can't even pour it, and the next one thin and watery. Somehow, Rexall Milk of Magnesia always seems to be just right. Well, ma'am, that's because every bottle of Rexall Milk of Magnesia has to meet an exacting standard of viscosity... Or it won't wear the Rexall label. What do you mean by viscosity? Well, an easy definition would be the degree of thickness in the liquid. Now, Rexall scientists conduct scientifically precise tests on every batch of Rexall milk of magnesia to make sure it meets this constant standard of viscosity because that's one big reason why you'll always get a uniform dosage from every bottle. Oh, and I thought it was all just an accident. Oh, no, ma'am. There are no accidents behind the fact you can always depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. And now back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. Well, hello, Otis. Is the lieutenant around? Yeah, he's around, so what? Otis, did you ever think how silly you'd look hanging from your thumb? Ah, oh, go soak your head. You mean that's how you shrunk yours? Ooh. Well, now, isn't that a coincidence? Is it? I was just thinking how peaceful it is around the precincts when you're not. Yeah. You shut up, you. Uh, you tell him, Perry. How would you like to... I'd like a little information, if you don't mind. I'd like you to see what facts you can scare up on the guy who runs the Apollo Health Club. His name is Van Arthur. If I remember right, the stiff we hauled away in front of your office today... Had a card from the Apollo Club in his billfold. You remember right. And we found out his name was Rudy Lubin. Narcotics has a file on him that goes forever. How about the ice pick? Any fingerprints? None. Well, that's always a help. I should say. Personally, I think Otis did it. Think I did what? You see, Walter, typical pathological reaction. What do you mean? Oh, don't worry, Otis. We won't let them hang you, right, Walt? Right. Not as long as we have a rope and a tree. No. Hey, what's up? Who are you calling? Leon's restaurant. Ellen's over there breathing with a diaphragm. And Seymour... Oh, you don't know him, but he's tearing phone books apart. Good evening, Leon. Oh, hello, Leon. This is Richard Diamond. My friend's still there? We. Oui. They are waiting for you, no? They're waiting for me, yes. Let me speak to the noisy one with the biceps, will you? Oui, bien entendu. What's all this about? 
Well, it's about a guy who got stabbed in front of my door, a masseur named O'Byron who got his neck broken doing tricks on the rings, and something that O'Byron mentioned earlier. Hello, hello. Uh, Seymour? Uh, where are you, anyway? We've been waiting an hour. That's not the point. The point is, I want you to listen to me. Could a guy do a handstand on the rings if he had a torn muscle in his shoulder? Are you kidding? I'm very serious. Heck no, he couldn't. It's impossible. Shoulder muscles are the ones that do all the work. Deltoids, trapezius, upper pecs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Look, Seymour, you got to do me a favor. Meet me in front of the Apollo Health Club as soon as you can get there. Well, how about your girlfriend? Tell her to wait there till I come for her. Oh, okay, then. Only, what are we going to do? Trap a murderer. I hung up, assured Lieutenant Levinson that I was just going to do a little reconnaissance work and then left for the Apollo Club. Seymour was waiting when my cab drew up in front. I explained to him the part I wanted him to play. Just leave it to me. If this doctor's a phony, I'll find out for you. Let's go. <laughs> Hello again, Mr. Diamond. Doctor? I just talked to the O'Brien boys' family. It was heart-rending, absolutely heart-rending. I almost broke down. No, you will before it's over. Hmm? I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, Seymour Caper. <laughs> a pleasure, sir. What do you say, Doc? Seymour's been having a little trouble with his chest lately. I told him you were a doctor of... Uh, uh, anatomical science. Yeah, and that you could undoubtedly do him some good. Very kind of you. There's something to do with my muscles here. You know anything about them? Muscles, so what an anatomical scientist knows most about. Oh, swell, swell. The doctor studied all about muscles in Switzerland. Oh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Just what seems to be the trouble. Well, here's the deal, Doc. It all started the other day when I was working out with my barbells. I was doing an exercise for my trapezius when all of a sudden I got a spasm in my tensor fascia. So I bent over to set the barbell down on the floor, and that's when the pain hit me. First in my pectoralis minor, then in my intercostals, and finally in my diaphragm. A kind of spasmodic contraction like when you get the hiccups. Only, no hiccups. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. uh, oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. A, a spasmodic contraction. Of the diaphragm. Uh -huh. Only no hiccups. And then my abdominals began tightening until I could hardly expel my rib cage. Oh. That's when I called Diamond here. Uh, I see. Yes, yes, quite naturally. Uh, if you'll pardon me a moment, I'll see if I... Uh, can... Yeah, but wait a minute. I haven't told you about my rhomboids. His rhomboids seem to be completely out of whack. Beg your pardon. Well, it must be either my rhomboids or my dorsal spinalis. Awful pain right between my shoulder blades. What do you figure it is, Doc? Well, actually, a hasty diagnosis isn't uh, feasible. Uh -huh. I, I really couldn't... Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, you just put your hand on my left rhomboid and feel how naughty it is, huh? Hey, left rhomboid. Yeah, go ahead, feel it. It's right under the middle of trapezius, Doc. You know where that is. Please, please, Seymour. Don't insult the doctor. Any old quack knows where that is. <laughs> Yes, certainly. Uh, middle trapezius. Uh, oh, oh, great Scott. I'd almost forgotten. I left a client under the sun lamp. <laughs> Pardon me, gentlemen. I'll be back in a, much, uh, a moment. Hmm. Have a hunch he's heading straight for an anatomy chart. Yeah, you're not kidding. That guy's as funny as the title he uses. Doctor of anatomical science. My glorious. Mine, too. Come on. <laughs> I took Seymour by his rhomboid and led him out onto the street, down to the middle of the block and up three flights to my office. While I did my thinking, Seymour did his push-ups. Three hundred and two. Three hundred and three. Well, Seymour, we know three things. Oh, Byron couldn't have been exercising on the rings with an injured shoulder. Five right. And the doctor's a phony. Six right. Then the doctor is a, is a front for something that's important enough to kill people over. Three hundred and... Right, eight. As a consequence, you and I are burglars. And what? Starting as soon as the Apollo Club closes. But you mean we're going to bust into the joint? We're going to bust into the joint or flatten your head in the attempt. Remind me to autograph your biceps later. I, uh, this detective business is dangerous, ain't it? Oh, yes, yeah, yes. But think of the advantages. Long hours, no time for meals. And on a good day, a guy can pick up as high as two or three hundred bullets in his back. I don't like it. Go on, crawl in. Okay, okay. Don't push! 
I followed Seymour in, and we waited a minute for our eyes to get accustomed to the darkness. Then we moved cautiously down the stairway to the first floor. I had no idea what I was looking for, but Dr. Van Arthur's office was the first place where I tried to find it. And the door's locked. You want it open? Well, of course I do, Seymour. Use your head. Okay. <laughs> Seymour would be pulling plywood out of his scalp for the next week, but it got us in. I took the place apart, but came up with a big fat nothing. So we left the office and headed down the hall toward the back of the building. Hey, look. What's the matter? It's a fruit juice bar. Oh, boy, am I thirsty. Well, go mix yourself up a... Juice bar. Juice bar, that's it. Yeah, good stiff bell of celery juice. No, man. no, no. This is what the little man who was stabbed outside my office was gasping about when he died. A juice bar. Come on. Sure. Nothing but juice. Oh. I wonder what's in this cupboard under the counter. Is it locked? Yeah. Think you can pull it open? Yeah. Just watch me. Ah, uh, you see? See more. Yeah. Will you marry me? I'll give you a belt and a solar plexus. Later, huh? Right now, let's see what's in this cupboard. Uh, you got a match? I don't smoke. That's all right. I found one. Well, what do you know about that? Nothing but cans of wheat germ. Hey, you know what that stuff is, don't you? I know that the masseur who got killed here told me that the guy who died in front of my office bought it up by the case. Hand me a can, will you? Sure. Here. This stuff is full of vitamins, you know. You want a handful? Oh, no, thanks. Yeah. Well, it must be some extra special brand. Never tasted anything like this before. Chew a little out of Seymour. We can dance to it. Hey. <laughs> hey. That really hits the spot, man. Hey, you want a wrestle? Oh, quiet, Seymour. <laughs> you know what, boy? I can fly. Seymour. I can fly. That is, see? Oh, man, do I ever love to fly. While Seymour stood there flapping his arms, I stuck my nose into the can he was holding. Uh-huh. Once you've smelled opium, you can always recognize the aroma, even when it's mixed with wheat jam. I was trying to decide what to do with Seymour when he slid slowly to the floor under the counter and rocked out. I loosened his collar and then started for a telephone. Leaving, Mr. Detective. <laughs> Wow, doctor, working late? <laughs> I'm glad I arrived in time to offer you a drink of fruit juice. Oh, well, thanks loads, but I'm driving. Where you're going, Mr. Detective, the weather is too hot for driving. Now, isn't that a nasty thing for a guy who sticks ice picks in people to say? Oh, that was the most unpleasant experience, I assure you. It's just that Mr. Lupin began demanding a little too high a percentage for this to be my uh, health foods. Even went so far as to threaten me with exposure. So you grabbed up an ice pick from your juice bar and followed him out of the club. Mm-hmm. I doubt if he ever knew what hit him. Oh, I bet he had a hunch. Well, huh? I I perceive that you sampled my wheat, sir. No, I opened a can or two. Personally, I never touched the stuff without bananas and cream. You've made the same unfortunate discovery the Red O'Brien made. Oh, that's why he called me at Leon. Yes, and that's also why I had to resort to the unsportsmanlike expedient of luring him to the balcony of the gymnasium and then pushing him over head first. I was about to call the doctor a particularly dirty name when Seymour's hulking shoulders loomed up behind the juice bar not over three feet from where the doctor was standing. Doctor, you're wrong. Seymour is not a sissy. What? I don't think you could beat up Seymour with one hand. That's why. Mr. Diamond, I'm afraid you're asking to be shot. Yeah, well, just do try it. Who said... <coughs> I don't teach him to call somebody who knows how to fly a sissy. Ah, we, we, but very angry. Look, Leon, you got to do something for me. We? Tell the violinist to get his big, fat strut of various over to where she's sitting. And quick, we, immediately. Hello, Miss Asher. Oh, 
come on, sweetie. I've had a rough night subduing murderers, opium eaters. At least you could do is say hello. Hello. I, uh, like that song, don't you? Look, I know all about you and your little violin bit. Huh? I saw Leon pointing us out to the violinist. He did? Mm-hmm. And where, may I ask, is little Seymour? Little Seymour ate too many goodies. He's having his stomach pumped. Oh, now that's sweet. I think so. I think the song is nice, too. I think you should sing it, too. I think I should, too. Oh! Magic spell you cast. This is La Viano. When you kiss me, heaven sighs. And though I close my eyes, I see La Viano. When you press your heart. Oh, God. Start the song again. Well, you care. This is La Viano. When you kiss me, heaven sighs. And though I close my eyes, I see La Viano. When you press me to your heart, I'm in a world apart. A world where roses bloom. Bicep? All right. Well? Nothing. Again, here's your Rexall family druggist. Whenever you have a headache, remember this about Rexall aspirin. When taken with water, the five full grains of pure aspirin in every Rexall tablet are ready to go to work for you even before they reach your stomach. So whenever you have a headache, remember that about Rexall aspirin. Ask for it at Rexall drugstores everywhere. And remember always, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, stars Dick Powell in the title role and is written by Harvey Easton with music composed and conducted by Frank Worth. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Arthur Q. Bryan, Wilm Herbert, Bill Conrad, Jay Novello, and Dan O'Herlihy. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to be with us next Wednesday at this time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Hiya, beautiful. Get lost, bristle puss. You need a shave. But I have shaved. What else do you want me to do? Silly boy, she wants you to go stag. Go stag? But why? Because stag is Rexall's exclusive line of men's good grooming aids, like stag brushless shave cream. No fuss, no massage, just smooth it on and presto, you get a clean, close shave. Your face stays smooth and whiskerless all day long. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll go stag. That's it. Join the stag line now at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Yes, to make girls care. Go stag.